This is the 14th lecture for MA1012 at University College Cork. In this lecture, we're going to think about matrix multiplication. First, let's talk about the simple case where we try to multiply just one row by uh, one column. When we have a single row and we have a single column, we multiply the row by the column. By multiplying entries, uh, we uh, multiply this by this, this by this, and this by this. As I draw my left hand along the row, right hand down the column, I multiply this entry by this entry, this entry by this entry, this entry by this entry, and add up the results. So the result should be 1 times 2 plus adding up the results, 8 times minus 3 plus 7 times 4. And I won't do the arithmetic, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so 1 times 2, 8 times minus 3, plus 7 times 4, add plus, plus, add up all the results. Okay, it may be more convenient to write that sometimes uh, with the, um, the uh, row written like this and the column written like this and then you can run your finger down this way along this way at the same time and see that you get the result. So you get 1 times 2 plus 8 times minus 3 plus 7 times 4. So we run down this way along this way. So this one times this one, A times B, is A times B. So that's how we can do a single row and a single column. Uh, multiplying them by each other. So that's the product of a row with a column. Row times column is a number. Okay, now we might wonder what happens if we have a bigger matrix. So this is very straightforward and easy to do. You can easily work out examples for yourself. Let's see if we can figure out what to do with a bigger matrix. Suppose we have matrix A is 1, 8, 3, minus 2, 0, 4. And we have a matrix B is 5, 9, minus 2, 7. How do I multiply A times B? A, B is what? Uh, one way to organize it is to write the A matrix. Uh, 1, 8, 3, minus 2, 0, 4. And then the B matrix up here, 5, 9, minus 2, 7. And what we do is we multiply uh, this row by this column to produce the entry that goes in here. So if I want to figure out what entry goes here, it should be this row and this column produce an entry here. Uh, this row and this column produce the entry here. This row, this column goes here. So across the row, down the column, you produce the entry that's across that row and down that column. In other words, the entries of A times B are the products of rows of A with columns of B. Each row of A gets multiplied by a column of B to produce an entry in AB in that corresponding row and column. The third row times the second column gives the entry in the third row, second column. Um, so that's how you can organize it. If you write it out like this, um, you can say that the entry that goes here, first row, first column of the output of A, B, A times B, should be first row A, first column B. So 1 times 5 plus 8 times minus 2, 1 times 5 plus 8 times minus 2 uh, equals 1, 5 is 5. 8 times minus 2 is minus 16. 5 minus 16 is minus 11. So I may need to put something off the side to be able to calculate these things out. Um, so that should be minus 11 goes here. Um, so now I multiply 1 times 9 plus 8 times 7. This uh, cross the first row down the second column to produce the entry and the output that's in first row, second column. So I can write that out as 1 times 9 plus 8 times 7. Okay, so 1 9s are 9 and 8 7s are 56. I hope I got that right. And uh, so, um, so that would give us uh, uh, would give us um, Okay, so that, that'll that give us uh, equals um, uh, 565, uh, I hope. And that goes here. And then, um, 
so on and so forth. So I'll do this row times this column. Three fives are 15. Uh, minus 2 is minus 2 is 4. So 15 plus 4 is 19. Um, and then uh, uh, then we do, let's see, this row times this column. Zero fives minus 2 fours is minus 8. Then this one, we've got to do 3 nines is 27. Minus 14 is 7, I hope. Is that right? 27 minus... Uh, minus 14, sorry, is um, is 13, okay, so, and then, um, so 27 minus 14, I think, is 13, is that right? And then uh, 0 nines plus 4 sevens is, uh, 4 sevens is 28. Okay, so that's how we multiply. This is the, we put the matrix A here, the matrix B here, and then we calculate out the matrix A times B by taking each row of A times each column of B to multiply out and produce the matrix A times B. Now we need to think about the properties of this matrix multiplication. Um, so its uh, its properties are, some of, some of them are, are very straightforward, but some of them are not. Uh, A times B in general might or might not be equal to B times A. And there are easy, simple examples to, that you can check to see the problems uh, that, that might show up. Sometimes A times B is not the same as B times A. There could be simple reasons for that, like they, like they might be different sizes even. A times B and B times A don't even have to be the same size of matrix, so, they don't, uh, so then they couldn't be equal. But in fact, there are even more subtle examples just of uh, simple, uh, straightforward 2 by 2 matrices A and B for which the, the, this doesn't work out. So in general, that doesn't always work out. That's one of the weird facts about multiplying matrices. They don't generally commute. Um, uh, that said to commute. Uh, a and B commute if A B is B A, and commuting is a is a relatively rare phenomenon among matrices. So, for example, we can work out um, the product of zero one two minus one um, one one three zero. Um, and it turns out to be three zero minus one two. But if you do it in the other order, taking this one first one one three zero zero one two minus one. It turns out in the other order, it gives you uh, 2, 0, 0, 3. And the non-commuting, uh, so this is A, B, and this is B, A, this is B, A, uh, done in the, uh, two different orders, and you've got two different answers. So they don't actually commute. And that's typical. Typically, matrices usually don't commute. When we multiply numbers, there's always a special number 1. And we know that, for example, 7 times 1 is the same as 1 times 7 is 7. Um, so is there a matrix that plays the role that 1 plays here, being the identity element for multiplication? Um, and it turns out there is. It's not obvious, but there is actually an so-called identity matrix, which does this, this sort of thing for as a sort of special property for multiplication. And it's simply, uh, well, it depends on which size you want. The identity one by one matrix is just the number one. I thought of as a as a matrix, a one by one matrix. Uh, sometimes we write I one to say it's the one by one identity matrix. The identity two by two matrix is this guy. The identity three by three matrix is this guy and so on and so forth. So the identity matrices are uh, matrices that, so the identity n by n matrix has ones, 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 ones everywhere down the diagonal here, and then zeros everywhere above and zeros everywhere below. Um, so it produces all those ones down here and then zeros here and zeros here. What is the point of this, of this special identity matrix, of these identity matrices of all these various sizes? Uh, what do they do that's special? Um, we can check uh, in simple examples. The point is that the identity matrix times any matrix is that, let's say, P is A, I, Q is A. If A is any uh, P by Q matrix, okay, so P by Q being a size, P rows, Q columns, any matrix at all, then it fits always into this equation. It's convenient sometimes to forget, um, so we often... Uh, forget deliberately um, the uh, uh, n in writing i n and just write 
write capital I to mean uh, the appropriate size of identity matrix that needs to be used in whatever expression we're doing. So whenever we use an identity matrix, it's it's often convenient to forget that it's that it's whether it's I three or let's say or I two, just to say call it I. It's whichever size of identity matrix is needed in the current circumstance in the certain situation we're working in. And we can check explicitly this equation. Um, for example, if we look at I, uh, the identity matrix of two by two size. Um, so one's down the diagonal, zero's everywhere else. That's our two by two identity matrix. And we multiply it by uh, this matrix here. Uh, let's calculate it out. Uh, again, you just run your fingers uh, across the rows down the column. So one times three plus zero times zero. I'm not gonna write it out as what I did before. I wrote A, B, and then computed out A, B. Um, put the B up here and the A over here so that I could see rows times columns. But you don't have to do that. Um, I can see it's this row times this column gives me 1 times 3 plus 0 times 0 is 3. Uh, 0 3's plus 1 0 is 0. Um, minus, uh, 1 minus 2. Uh, 0 2's is minus 2. 1 4, no 6's is 4 and so on and so forth 2 minus 6 so you get the same matrix back again this matrix here is just completely reappeared so identity times a is a for whatever matrix a so besides uh, the non-commuting property of matrices the a times b we said was not was sometimes equal and sometimes not equal to b times a and it's not uh, obvious when that happens and when that doesn't it's a very complicated story um, but we can say that other than that typically most of the laws that we're used to for matrix for mat multiplication of numbers occur also for matrices a b c is a b c um, and uh, for example an a times b plus c is a b plus a c and um, Similarly, on the other side, A plus B times C is AC plus BC. And uh, any multiple, constant number multiple of AB is the constant multiple of A times B, which is equal to A times that constant multiple of B. Um, so it uh, numbers pass through. Uh, this where K is a number here is, um, is any number, a real number, let's say complex number, if we're a complex number of matrices. And uh, also, um, one further result, which we don't have for ordinary arithmetic, uh, is we know this we have this transpose operation. And one of the um, nice facts about the transpose is that it reverses the order of the multiplication, but otherwise doesn't change it. So, um, so it respects multiplication up to reordering everything. There are certain cla classes of matrices, types of matrices, that show up a lot more than others um, and that play a special role in the story um, because often they, they help to carry out faster computations. Um, so the diagonal, um, or also called the main diagonal, the diagonal or main diagonal of a matrix, um, let's say, uh, so A equals AIJ with entries AIJ is um, uh, the um, the numbers uh, A11, A1, A22, uh, A33, and so on, up to ANN, um, if it's an N by N matrix. So, um, so those are the numbers that occur if you write A out as a11, A12, da 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 da, A21, A22, da 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 da, da 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 da, then uh, all the way down to A and N. That's these numbers here. Uh, and we really only want those for square matrices. We're really only interested in this, this for a square matrix. Okay, so um, so that's the diagonal. Okay, so those entries. Um, and um, a matrix is said to be. Um, a matrix A is said to be uh, upper triangular um, if uh, if it has the, the 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 form that the matrix A has the form of it can have anything on the diagonal, anything above the the diagonal, anything at all here, but everything below the diagonal is zero. Okay, so on the diagonal anything, above the diagonal anything, that's all fine. 
but down here it's all zeros. Underneath the diagonal it's all zeros. Um, and it's said to be lower uh, triangular uh, in the same situation if it, uh, almost the same story, um, can have anything on the diagonal, anything below the diagonal, um, but zeros up above the diagonal. Uh, and um, and it's said to be diagonal. Diagonal if um, if it has the form of um, anything on the diagonal, zeros above, zeros below. Okay, so that's what it means to be upper, lower, or diagonal. Upper triangular, lower triangular, or diagonal. The, the most obvious example of a diagonal is, of course, the identity matrix, um, which we've said is ones all the way down the diagonal, and then is zeros everywhere else. Um, so a simple example. One, one reason why the upper triangulars and lower triangulars are so significant is that a lot of computations are faster when carried out in that world. And that at heart, the heart of it is the, is the fact that if um, A is, say, upper triangular and B is also upper triangular, then uh, AB is upper triangular, so I won't write out it all in words, just the pictures make it clear, I hope, what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, so uh, we can get a more precise statement in the lecture notes. Um, and uh, the um, the argument for that is is not so uh, difficult. Uh, I should also point out that also maybe that A plus B is also, uh, this one's much easier to see this guy is upper triangular, and any constant multiple of A is also uh, upper triangular. Obviously the same thing works for lower triangular as well. Um, so this is the one that's not, not not clear. I mean it's clear that all the entries are zero below the diagonal for A and for B, then when you add en entries, you add zeros to zeros, you get zeros. So if A has zeros below the diagonal, B has zeros below the diagonal, you add them together, you add the entries, you add zeros to zeros, you get zeros. So this is easy. This is easy. You just scale all the entries and all the zeros scale to zeros. So this is easy. This is the one that's hard. Um, takes a bit of thought to work out. So to, to work out a proof of this for the for the multiplication case, the, the hard one, this case here, how do we do it? Um, what do we want to say? We want to say that A is something like uh, this. Um, how do we say that in terms of matrices? That's exactly saying that the entries down here vanish. So if we go our our, our row goes high while our column is still low, we get zeros. So if we're down in a, a row that's lower than the column. So that's saying exactly that A, I, J entries are zero if the row I is down low below the column. So if I is greater than J. So, um, so I equals J, that's when you're on the diagonal. And I is less than J is when the when the J is particularly the column is particularly high compared to the row. You're over here, and when the column is uh, is low compared to the row, the row is higher than the column. You're down here. That's this condition. Um, so uh, so if we want A to be upper, and we want B to be also upper, um, then how do we uh, see, see how that multiplies out to give us? Um, a resulting upper. Why does it still stay upper when you multiply them? So we can write that as saying that means that aij is 0 if i is bigger than j and uh, b, uh, the entries of b, bij is also 0 i is greater than j. Now what are the entries of a times b? ab uh, has some entries, let's call them say cijs. What are the, what's the formula for them? Uh, the formula is the product entries are the sums of the products of the entries. But um, the row, this row of A, ith row of A, jth column of B. So the entries in the ith row, jth column. That's why it's I first and then some index and then index and then J. So that'll be column J, that'll be row I. Um, so we're multiplying row I by column J and that's how we get an expression explicitly for that. Um, and that's the sum over K. But um, so if uh, i is bigger than j, we want to show that cij is 0. How do we do it? Um, let's uh, see how we can work out explicitly that, that thing has to vanish. So we get uh, if i is bigger than j, 
cij, the, the entry of the product, which I'll call c, um, is the sum k equals 1 to whatever size of matrix we're dealing with of aij, uh, aik, bkj. And um, so we can split that into a sum of entries where k is less than i, aik, bkj. Um, and um, and and a sum um, k is bigger. Well, let's say we could do k is equal to i, and a sum k is bigger than i. Um, so we've got to work out those possibilities: a i k b k j a i k b k j. Okay, but when k is uh, less than i, we've got that um, i is bigger than k, so that's zero. So that's zero. So that one knocks out. And now what we've got to do is to work out um, that if k is bigger than i, um, when we have i is bigger than j, k is bigger than i and i is bigger than j, that forces k to be bigger than j. Um, and so, well, we could do k bigger than or equal to i, I suppose. Let's get rid of that one. Just do k bigger than or equal to i. i is bigger than j, so k is bigger than j. But if k is bigger than j, that implies that's zero. Um, implies that b, k, j is zero. And so that knocks out. And so we get equals zero. Okay, so that's the proof. It does involve working directly with it with abstract indices rather than explicitly writing out matrix entries in numbers to get a proof that works for all possible matrices A and B. You have to write them all out. You have to write them in terms of abstract indices. A is a matrix of entries indexed by I's and J's. B is a matrix of numbers and indexed by I's and J's. So it's a bit messy because the proof requires us to work with this very abstract notation. In our next lecture, we'll think about how to deal with systems of linear equations in terms of matrices. We've already thought about how to solve linear equations by uh, Gaussian uh, elimination, uh, reducing uh, to reduced row echelon form or just to row echelon form. Um, we've also now got a world of matrices we can work with, and so we need to put those two together and see how to relate the theory of linear equations to the theory of matrices.